As the government shutdown drags on, hundreds of thousands of government workers are going without pay. Welcome back to Upfront. We're now going to hear the Republican perspective on the border wall fight. Wisconsin Congressman Glenn Grothman, he was one of seven House members who voted Friday against a pay plan for federal workers affected by the shutdown. Congressman Grothman joins us now on Upfront. And I want to have you address that because the vote was 411 to 7 in favor of this plan that would guarantee back pay for federal workers. Why did you vote against it? Well, already they're going to get back pay if you're working. And I am one of 12 congressmen who co-sponsored a bill to make sure that federal employees who are working get paid timely so they don't have to wait two or three months for their pay. So there's no question that federal employees who are working ought to be paid. And I was very disappointed that that bill will cause those employees to have to wait until after the shutdown is over. However, the bill also guarantees pay to the federal employees who aren't working. Now, I understand they went through a lot, but it creates the rather unusual situation, given that every employee has some work expenses, that the employees who are working are not as in good a position as the employees who are laid off, which makes no sense at all. But if you're laid off, let's say you're not working, and through no fault of their own, right. they're not working, uh, but they still have a mortgage payment, they still have a student loan payment, they still have bills to pay. Is it fair to them to not be insured of back pay? It's never unfair when you lose your job. And quite frankly, never fair. it's yeah. never fair. Yeah. But I think if you would work out some sort of compromise, say, look, okay, you're not working for three months. Let's say it goes for three months. We'll give you 60% of your pay or 70% of your pay. But to give you 100% of your pay, if you don't work for three or four months, seems a little bit not right. You feel like you're, you're not being empathetic enough to the people who are in this position? I said I could compromise. We'd pay them. 50% of their pay or something for not working. I suppose I could vote for that as part of a compromise. I want to ask you. <laughs> there are a lot, of, a lot of other people out there who remember get laid off and none of them get anything, so. I want to ask you about uh, our current situation and, and the president's stance on the border wall and funding for the border wall. Is he doing the right thing? Well, he's been very patient. He's been president for over two years now and it was his number one promise. Five billion dollars, a lot of money but that's something like one-seventh of what we spend every year, say, on foreign aid. It's something like one-seventeenth of the increase in defense spending uh, that we do on an annual basis since he's been president. So I don't think that's too much to ask for, and it shouldn't be that controversial. You've got to remember, 10, 11 years ago, Hillary Clinton, Chuck Schumer, Joe Biden all voted for a wall, so it was a bipartisan thing a while back. I think after two years of signing appropriation bills and not having it included, for President Trump to say, look, I finally got to negotiate longer, we need a wall, I don't think is unreasonable. He's been very patient to wait over two years and have the Democrats again and again say, no, now that you're president, we won't spend the $5 billion. How long should he stick to his guns? How long should he say, I'm not backing down on this? Well, I, I, I guess the question can go the other way. How long before the Democrats agree to spend $5 billion? I think he just has to do a better job of selling it to the public. And as more and more people reach the conclusion that he's right, I think some of the Democrats will agree to fund the wall. There are rumors right now that some of them want to. Are, are you okay with American taxpayers paying for the wall? I mean, you heard the president during the campaign. The president well, said Mexico will pay for it. I think his followers thought Mexico would pay for it. Are you okay with the fact that American well, taxpayers will a, pay a for it? A frustrating thing uh, with President Trump is, of course, sometimes he says things that can't be taken literally. It hurts him. I've talked to him about it personally, uh, but that's just something that we've got to deal with. And uh, I don't think even his most ardent supporters ever really believed, at least the ones that I know, didn't believe that Mexico was going to pay for the wall. They know that, unfortunately, with this president, sometimes you've got to take some things with a grain of salt. National emergency. There is the possibility, although the president said again today he still wants to work this out through Congress, but there is the possibility, at least, that he could declare a national emergency. How do you feel as a Republican, as a conservative, how do you feel about that? I don't like it. I hope it doesn't come down to it. I mean, we do have an emergency. I think of all the problems out there, one of the problems that has to be solved, say, in the next year is the immigration problem. We have 700,000 Americans sworn in legally every year. President Trump is not trying to reduce that number, but he's saying, look, get in line. And he does want to make a statement that our immigration laws should be taken seriously. We have a governor of California, the mayor of New York, uh, in essence saying we want to give away welfare to, or at least uh, Medicaid to people who are not here legally. We have uh, 
people all over the country, local officials establishing sanctuary cities. We have national Democrat congressmen saying we should abolish ICE. I mean, it creates a huge problem in that we are sending the message to people south of the border that our immigration laws should not be taken seriously. So I have no problem with President Trump saying we've got to enforce our borders. One more question about the wall, something you proposed back uh, nine or ten days ago. Um, and this is a, a crowdfunding uh, site set up under the Treasury Department, so the government right. would oversee this, where people could contribute to build a wall. Why did you suggest that? What's been the reception to it? Well, it's overwhelmingly positive, and apparently there's one of these sites that already has collected over $19 million. And I think that the, the more you make it a formal thing in which people are able to get their income tax deduction, I think that amount will climb up. I think President Trump made a mistake in only asking for $5.7 billion at this time, because I think it's going to cost more than that. So if we can wind up raising another 20 or $30 million or maybe $200 and $300 million more, uh, it'll make that wall all the much longer when a compromise is eventually reached. Any, uh, any chance of this moving forward? I mean, you've got a, uh, a democratically controlled house. President Obama was building somewhat of a wall when he was there. So I hope some of the Democrats remove their newfound hatred for the wall. Congressman Glenn Grothman, it's good to have you back on the program. Thanks for myself. For being I'm with on us. my couche. <laughs> Coming up next, one of Governor Tony Evers' first acts trying to get around a new Republican law.